What's up guys? Welcome to another Revit video. In this video, we'll be covering duplicating views. There's a number of different ways you can duplicate views and there's different reasons as to why you might use those different ways of duplicating views. So I, I, right now I'm in a basic floor plan, nothing special. It's a long looking plan. It, I'm using a default out of the box Revit template and I'm on level one. So what do I want to do at this point? Well, I, I want to duplicate the view. Well, why are we wanting to duplicate the view? Well, maybe what we want to do is we have a very similar plan. Maybe we're doing a, a, a schematic design, a diagram overlays or something like that. We're making a working view or something like that. That's my, that might be why you want to duplicate the view. Another reason why you want to, might want to duplicate the view is it's, it's so wide. You've got a really long building, long plan, and it won't fit. So you've got to you've got to find a way to split it up, like down the middle or somewhere where it might look right on a sheet or might fit on a sheet. How about that? So one reason we might duplicate it is to split it up, and we'll get right into that in just a second. So if I if I go to right click a view, this is where we're going to go to duplicate a view. If I go to duplicate view, we can see we've got some options. There's duplicate. There's duplicate with detailing and there's duplicate as dependent. Now, what are all these? Okay, so duplicate is, it's, it's exactly what it is. It's duplicate. You're gonna make another copy of it. It's gonna be everything in your model as another floor plan in this case, just duplicated. That's pretty self-explanatory. So what is duplicate with detailing? So detailing is referring to 2D elements, lines, detail components, text, anything that only shows up in 2D. There's a bunch of different things that only show up in 2D, dimensions as well. Basically everything you find in the annotation tab is something that would be considered 2D or detailing. So if I go to duplicate view and duplicate with detailing, what we'll get in that case is the view will be duplicated, all the modeled elements will always be duplicated, but along with that every 2D element will be as well. I'll cover duplicate as dependent in just a second, but what I want to do is I'm going to take some basic detail lines and I'm just going to draw them all the way across the floor plan like this. I'll make it really wide lines so we can see it. There they are. They're big lines. And so what I want to do now is duplicate this view. So if I go to duplicate view and I go to duplicate, what we'll get is the same view with all the 3D elements, but we don't have those lines. I'm going to rename this to dupe. Dupe. And I'll go to duplicate level one, go back to level one, and I will duplicate this with detailing. And so what happens now is I've duplicated it and I get all the 3D elements, but I also get the 2D. I get all these lines that go right with it. So I'll rename this to dupe detail. Great. So we've got those two different circumstances of duplicating. Very simple. You, if you want the 2D elements, duplicate with detailing. That simple. That is that simple. So what is this, this last option? I'm going to delete these lines. So what is this last option we have here? Duplicate as dependent. So what is that? So if I duplicate as dependent, let's go ahead and do that. I get this new view that's duplicated. I get it underneath this original view that I used to duplicate. Well, that's kind of confusing because we, we made a duplicate, we copied it, but it's also a, a dependent. So what does that really mean? The dependency is, you, you can see here in the way that the, the project browser is set up, I have the main view that I use to duplicate. And then I've got the dependent, or let's call it child, like a parent-child relationship you've seen in different parts of using computers. A child co compared to parent, it's a dependent. So in this case, what we get in this copy is essentially the same as what we see in the parent. It's kind of hard to explain, but I'll do it just like this. So if we draw a line, in this dependent. I'm going to draw a similar line what I did before, just draw it all the way across the building. If I go back to level one, I can see there it is. 
And why is that there? Why does that make sense? Well, it makes sense because they're essentially the same view. They're, this dependent view is getting all of its properties, all of its, all of its view properties, detailing, components, everything that you see, it's pulling from this main level one. So, okay, at this point, it doesn't look like there was any point to have done what we did. And honestly, there's not only to the point where you need to actually break this floor plan up. So you wouldn't necessarily, uh, I've never used a, a dependency with just one dependency. So what does that really mean? Well, that means I can duplicate this view as a dependent and I get a second child in this case, I get a second dependent. So now you're probably thinking, well, it's getting even more confusing and yes it is except when I start changing these borders or regions, crop regions of these dependent views, you'll start to see why I might do something like this. So again, I have a long plan and I use the long plan because this is where I use these dependent views. So what I can do is I'm gonna go to this dependent one and I'm gonna take this crop region and I'm gonna move this halfway over. So I can only see half the building. So maybe now it'll fit on a sheet. That's kind of the point of what we're doing here. And at this point, I'll go to level one, just the full view, and I can see everything. It's still there. And it's it's the view itself. If you always remember that level one, like in this case, the main parent view here is the actual view holding all the data, then you're fine. I can go to level one, dependent one, the first dependent, and then I can move the crop region. The crop regions are their own. They're based on each individual view, whether it's a parent or child, dependency, whatever, it doesn't matter. So now let's go to the second dependent. And again, we just did this, we just duplicated this as a dependent. And like I just said, we can now move the crop region of this independently. So let's move this crop region towards this side. So maybe this floor plan will fit on a sheet by itself. So what are we left with? We're left with this main parent view showing everything. It's the view, it's everything that's there. And then we have dependency one and two where we, we already showed from the very beginning of duplicating as a dependent that everything in 3D and everything is there just like it's there in the main view. But now that we have the only difference being that we have this crop region pushed to one side on either one. In this case, it's very helpful because it allows me to actually split up a view into two or as many as you want different sections, portions, but all you have to do is deal with one view itself. And so let, let's, let's further demonstrate this. Again, I drew this line all the way across. And it, this is the main view, I'm in level one. You could do this in any one of the, the main views or dependent views. But when I go to de dependent view one, despite the crop, I still see the line. It's there, it's exactly like what I want. And if I go to the other side, the crop is there, but the line's also there. It has, it's taking everything from level one, this main view, this main parent view, and putting it in each dependent because it's, it's essentially the same. If you treat the dependents the exact same content wise as what's in the parent view you won't get tripped up your mind won't freak out as to like what these things are and what's happening but just knowing that the only thing that's different here in these two dependent views is that I pushed the crop region to one side or the other that makes things really easy so now really here's why we did this so let's go and make a sheet go to sheet go to OK I've got a sheet and if I just drag level one on here well, we can clearly see this is way too big. This does not fit, and there's no way you could get this to fit on the sheet. You have to edit the title block or change the scale or something of the view, and maybe we don't want to do that. I mean, we're at an eighth already, and maybe we don't want to get any smaller. Don't like having to go smaller than that if I don't have to. So what would I do in this case? Well, I'd, let's remove that view, and let's instead drag this view dependent, dependency one on there. Well, now this clearly fits. It's one side. And now what I'm going to do is make another sheet, and I'm going to drag this other side. So this is fantastic. I have everything that I need from the parent view, everything here, split between two dependent views, each on their own sheet. That's great. That's really easy. 
So something to be aware of when you're using these duplicate views and dependent views especially. This is only going to be the case with dependent views, but when you drag these dependent views, like the, these will still be under and still be dependents of level one, but you're not actually dragging level one on. You're, you're keeping that and working off of that, and it may be somewhere else in your project browser that is not appearing with all your sheets. So these views will not go to the sheets necessarily, because if we go to sheets, we can clearly see that we see the sheets, we see the views there on the sheets, but the views are still there under level one, the main view. So that's something to be aware of because you might have them on the sheets, but they'll always be up here. And so the thing to remember is if you want to work off of this half view, you can, but just also know that everything that you do in this view will also be seen or be technically there in this first dependent. It'll just be over here where you can't see it. So typically what I like to do is if I'm making some modifications to anything that I have on these split plans, I'll just go to this main level one and do everything and do all the work I need to do and everything will show up where it needs to be, whether it's on one side or the other. It just works and it works itself out that way and everything shows up on the sheet, just like this. That's gonna do it for duplicating views. And like I said in the previous video, this is kind of a little mini series to where I'm I'm showing how to split up views using scope boxes and really the power of scope boxes and that was the previous video that I did so go, first go check that out maybe before you watch this I know you probably already watched this video but now that you've watched this video make sure you've watched the scope boxes video because it will apply to this and in my next video the final part of this mini series I'll cover match lines and match lines will really put everything together as to splitting up views using scope boxes and having a match line to organize this data on a sheet for plans that are too big to fit on one sheet or something like that. There, that that's all too common so please check out the previous scope boxes video and stick around for the match line video coming next. Sure hope you enjoyed this video if you did Please demolish that like button. Also subscribe. That really helps me out. Really does help me out. I sure hope you all had a wonderful day. Hope to see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.